Zarnok stood at the observation deck of Xanter Station, his keen eyes fixed on the incoming human ship, the Endeavor. The vessel, heavily scarred from battle, limped into the docking bay. Sparks flew as the damaged hull made contact, and Zarnok's curiosity surged. How could humans repair such extensive damage so quickly? The Vorshan alien, known for his methodical and precise nature, had never seen such a rapid turnaround. His own species prided themselves on meticulous, time-consuming repairs, often taking weeks for tasks humans seemed to complete in hours. He adjusted his sensory apparatus, recording every detail for later analysis. The bay doors opened with a hiss, revealing a scene of controlled chaos. Human technicians, each moving with practiced efficiency, swarmed over the endeavor like ants. Zarnok's interest grew. He decided he needed to understand this phenomenon firsthand. Zarnok made his way to the command center, his smooth gait and shimmering scales attracting glances from passersby. He approached Captain John Mercer, a seasoned human with an aura of confidence and a perpetual smirk. Captain Mercer, Zarnok began, his voice a smooth blend of curiosity and formality. I am Zarnok of the Vorshan delegation. I seek to understand how your people repair ships so swiftly. May I observe your process? Mercer looked at Zarnok, a mix of surprise and amusement playing across his features. Well, Zarnok, you've come to the right place. Follow me and try to keep up. Mercer led Zarnok into the heart of the repair bay. The air buzzed with the sound of welding torches, the whir of robotic arms, and the shouted instructions of technicians. The scene was a stark contrast to the quiet, orderly repair docks of Vorsha. Humans are a bit unconventional. Mercer explained as they walked. We mix cutting-edge technology with good old-fashioned elbow grease. Zarnok observed the repair bots' sleek, autonomous machines working alongside human engineers. The robots handled the fine, intricate tasks, while the humans focused on larger, more complex repairs. It was a harmonious blend of precision and adaptability. One technician, a young woman named Jessica, was elbow-deep in a control panel her hands moving with practice skill. Zarnok noted her intense focus and the way she communicated seamlessly with the repair bots. Jessica, Mercer called. Give our guest a rundown of what you're doing. Jessica looked up, her eyes sharp and intelligent. We're rerouting the ship's primary power grid through auxiliary conduits. The damage cut off the main line, so we're improvising to get the systems back online. Zarnok nodded, impressed. Your ability to adapt in real time is remarkable. Jessica grinned. It's all about thinking on your feet. We don't always have the luxury of time. As they moved through the bay, Zarnok saw technicians using a variety of tools and materials, some of which were unfamiliar to him. He watched as they worked on the hull, sealing breaches with a combination of nanotech sealants and traditional welding. The efficiency and speed were astonishing. Your methods are highly effective, Zarnok commented. In Vorsha, we rely heavily on pre-planned procedures and protocols. Mercer chuckled. We've got protocols too, but sometimes you just have to improvise. It's our flexibility that gives us an edge. A loud alarm suddenly blared, drawing their attention to a critical component failure in the ship's propulsion system. The situation looked dire, but Zarnok saw no panic in the humans' faces. Instead, they sprang into action, each technician knowing exactly what to do. Mercer turned to Zarnok. This is where we shine. Watch and learn. The crew worked together seamlessly. Jessica led a team to stabilize the component while others prepared replacement parts. Zarnok marveled at their coordination and quick thinking. Within minutes, the crisis was averted, and the propulsion system was back online. Impressive, Zarnok admitted. Your teamwork and adaptability are extraordinary. Mercer nodded. We've been through a lot. It's made us resourceful. As the immediate crisis passed, Mercer turned to Zarnok with a more serious expression. We could use someone with your skills, Zarnok. How about lending a hand? Zarnok hesitated, then nodded. I would be honored. He joined the repair team, using his Vorshan knowledge to assist in recalibrating the ship sensors. 
Despite the initial cultural and methodological differences, Zarnock found himself fitting in, learning from the human's innovative approach. As the endeavor neared full operational status, Zarnock felt a newfound respect for these resilient beings. They had shown him that sometimes, speed and adaptability could triumph over meticulous planning. Zarnock moved methodically through the repair bay, his observations recorded meticulously in his data logs. The human approach to ship repair was a whirlwind of activity, a stark contrast to the Vortian way. The humans worked with a blend of technology and manual skill that both baffled and impressed him. Captain Mercer guided Zarnock to the core of the repair operations. This is where we handle the major repairs, he said, pointing to a large section of the ship's interior. The air was thick with the sound of tools clanging and the hum of machinery. Zarnock watched as technicians performed tasks that required both precision and brute force. One group was reattaching a damaged thruster, while another team worked on recalibrating the ship's navigation systems. The efficiency with which they moved and communicated was remarkable. Your methods are quite eclectic, Zarnock commented, his tone a mixture of admiration and curiosity. Mercer chuckled. We make do with what we've got. Sometimes that means improvising. Zarnock's sensors detected an anomaly in the ship's power distribution network. He alerted a nearby technician, who quickly assessed the situation. Good catch, she said, her eyes meeting Zarnock's with a mixture of gratitude and surprise. We could use another set of hands like yours around here. As the day progressed, Zarnock's understanding of human methods deepened. He noted how they combined cutting-edge technology with traditional engineering techniques, creating a dynamic workflow that adapted to the situation at hand. The human's ability to think on their feet and react to unexpected challenges was something Zarnock had not encountered in his own culture. A sudden surge in the ship's power grid caused a system-wide blackout. The lights flickered and went out, plunging the repair bay into darkness. For a moment, there was silence. Then the technicians sprang into action, their voices calm and coordinated. Backup generators now? Mercer barked, his voice cutting through the darkness. The team responded swiftly, and within moments, the emergency lights flickered on, casting a dim glow over the bay. Zarnock sensors adjusted to the low light. He observed as the humans quickly identified the source of the problem, a faulty capacitor in the main power conduit. Mercer directed a team to replace the component while others worked on stabilizing the remaining systems. This kind of thing happen often? Zarnock asked, his tone more curious than critical. Mercer shrugged. More often than we'd like. But we handle it. Adapt and overcome. Right? Zarnock nodded, absorbing the human's resilience. It was a trait he had come to admire, even if he didn't fully understand it. The human's ability to remain calm and focused in the face of sudden challenges was a stark contrast to the Vortian method of meticulous planning and procedure. The technicians completed the repairs, and the ship's system slowly came back online. The lights brightened, and the hum of machinery resumed. Mercer turned to Zarnock with a grin. See? No problem. Zarnock smiled though his mind was racing with questions. How could a species that seemed so chaotic and unpredictable achieve such efficiency? He resolved to learn more, to understand the core of what made humans so adaptable. As the repairs continued, Zarnock took a more active role, assisting the technicians and offering his expertise. The humans welcomed his input, and he found himself fitting into their team more easily than he had expected. In one corner of the bay, a young engineer named Liam was struggling with a particularly stubborn piece of equipment. Zarnock approached, offering his help. Together, they managed to fix the problem, and Liam thanked him with a genuine smile. You know, Zarnock, Liam said, wiping sweat from his brow. You're not so bad for an alien. You adapt pretty quickly. Zarnock nodded. I am learning from the best. Their camaraderie was interrupted by an urgent message from the ship's communication officer. Captain, we've detected a fleet of unidentified vessels approaching the station. They're not responding to our hails. Mercer's expression hardened. Battle stations, everyone. Zarnock, stick close. We might need your expertise. 
the repair bay transformed into a hub of strategic preparation. Technicians who had been focused on repairs now readied the ship for potential combat. Zarnok watched in awe as the crew switched roles seamlessly, their adaptability once again on full display. Zarnok felt a surge of determination. He had come to understand the human spirit, their resilience and resourcefulness. Now, he would stand with them, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. The endeavor was a hive of activity as the crew prepared for the approaching fleet. Zarnok stood among them, feeling a sense of inclusion he hadn't expected. The human's ability to shift from repair to defense mode with such fluidity was both impressive and bewildering. Captain Mercer directed his crew with precision. Jessica, focus on the shield generators. Liam, get those plasma turrets online. Zarnok, stay with me. We're going to need every bit of expertise we can get. Zarnok nodded, his sensors already analyzing the data from the approaching ships. Their configuration is unfamiliar. We need to adapt quickly. Mercer grinned, a glint of excitement in his eyes. That's what we do best. As the team worked, Zarnok noticed the camaraderie among the humans. They communicated with shorthand and inside jokes, their rapport built through countless shared experiences. It was a stark contrast to the Vorshan method of solitary, silent efficiency. Here, Jessica called, waving Zarnok over. Help me stabilize the shield output. It's fluctuating too much. Zarnok joined her, his hands moving in sync with hers as they recalibrated the system. Your approach to problem solving is organic, he noted, admiring her quick thinking. Jessica smiled. We've learned to trust our instincts. Sometimes you have to go with what feels right. The ship systems came online one by one. Each success met with cheers from the crew. Zarnok felt a surge of accomplishment. He was becoming part of this human team, contributing to their efforts with his unique skills. Captain, Liam reported, the plasma turrets are ready. We're at full defensive capability. Mercer nodded. Good. Let's show them what we're made of. The alien fleet drew closer, their ships sleek and menacing. The humans braced for impact, their faces set with determination. Zarnok felt a mix of anxiety and anticipation. He had studied human resilience, but now he would witness it firsthand. The first volley from the alien ships struck the Endeavor's shields. The impact was intense, but the shields held. The crew worked with practiced efficiency, redistributing power and returning fire with precision. Zarnok, monitor their attack patterns, Mercer ordered. We need to find a weakness. Zarnok sensors scanned the enemy ships, his analytical mind racing. Their energy signatures suggest a reliance on centralized power sources. If we can disrupt those, it could neutralize their offensive capabilities. Mercer relayed the information to his crew. Target their power cores. Let's see if Zarnok's right. The Endeavor fired a concentrated barrage at the enemy fleet. Zarnok watched as the human weapons struck true, causing several alien ships to falter. The crew cheered, their spirits lifted by the small victory. But the battle was far from over. The alien fleet regrouped, launching a coordinated assault that tested the Endeavor's defenses to their limits. Zarnok and Jessica worked frantically to keep the shield stable, while Liam directed the counterattack. Zarnok marveled at the human's ability to adapt under pressure. They improvised solutions, trusted each other's instincts, and never hesitated to take bold actions. It was a dynamic he had never experienced among his own people. A particularly intense blast rocked the ship, sending Zarnok sprawling. He quickly regained his footing, his resolve strengthening. He was part of this team now, and he would do everything in his power to help them succeed. Captain, their lead ship is vulnerable, Zarnok reported. A direct hit to their bridge could disable their command structure. Mercer's eyes lit up with determination. All right, team, you heard him. Focus all firepower on that lead ship. Let's end this. The Endeavor unleashed a barrage of plasma bolts, each one targeting the alien flagship. The ship's shields buckled under the onslaught, and a final, well-placed shot from Liam's turret struck the bridge, causing the alien vessel to explode. The remaining enemy ships hesitated, their formation breaking. 
the humans seized the opportunity, pressing their advantage and driving the alien fleet into retreat. Cheers erupted throughout the endeavor as the crew celebrated their hard-won victory. Mercer turned to Zarnok, his expression one of gratitude and respect. We couldn't have done it without you, Zarnok. You've proven yourself to be an invaluable member of this team. Zarnok felt a swell of pride. It has been an honor to work alongside you. Your adaptability and ingenuity are truly remarkable. Zarnok stood beside Captain Mercer on the bridge of the Endeavor, the repaired ship now a symbol of resilience and teamwork. The alien fleet had retreated, but the threat was far from over. Scanners showed the enemy regrouping, preparing for another assault. Mercer's voice cut through the tense atmosphere. Jessica, get those shield generators back to full capacity. Liam, ensure our weapon systems are fully operational. Zarnok, your insights were invaluable earlier. Stay close. We might need your analytical prowess again. Zarnok nodded, his eyes scanning the tactical display. The alien ships, though temporarily driven back, were reconfiguring their formation, a strategy Zarnok recognized as a prelude to a more coordinated strike. He shared his observations with Mercer, who immediately relayed the information to his crew. As the humans worked, Zarnok marveled at their ability to adapt and innovate under pressure. Their collaboration was a dance of efficiency, each member contributing their unique skills to the collective effort. It was a dynamic Zarnok found both fascinating and inspiring. Captain, Jessica called from her station. Shields are at full strength. We've rerouted power from non-essential systems to boost their capacity. Good work, Mercer replied. Liam, status on the weapons? Plasma turrets are primed and ready, Liam confirmed. Missile launchers are loaded and targeting systems are online. The Endeavor braced for the renewed attack. Zarnok monitored the alien fleet's movements, providing real-time analysis to Mercer. Their lead ships are acting as decoys, Zarnok noted. The real threat is in the rear formation, where they're likely preparing a more potent offensive. Mercer nodded. All right, team. You heard him. Focus our fire on the rear ships. Let's disrupt their plans before they can execute them. The Endeavor launched a preemptive strike, targeting the rear of the alien formation. Explosions lit up the void as the human weapons found their marks. The alien fleet staggered, their strategy momentarily thrown into disarray. Nice shot, Liam, Mercer exclaimed. Keep it up. As the battle raged, Zarnok found himself not just an observer but an active participant. His understanding of both Vorshan and human tactics allowed him to offer strategic insights that proved crucial in the heat of combat. Captain, their flagship is maneuvering to flank us, Zarnok reported. We need to adjust our position to counter. Roger that, Mercer responded. Helm, adjust our trajectory to intercept. The Endeavor swung into action, its engines roaring as it shifted position to face the new threat. The alien flagship bore down on them, its weapon systems glowing ominously. Incoming fire, Jessica warned. The Endeavor shuddered as the alien weapon struck, but the shields held. The crew worked frantically to stabilize the systems, redistributing power to maintain defensive integrity. Zarnok, any ideas? Mercer asked, his voice calm despite the urgency. Zarnok's mind raced. If we can overload their weapon systems, it might cause a chain reaction. Target their energy conduits directly. Mercer relayed the plan to Liam, who adjusted the targeting systems accordingly. The Endeavor unleashed a concentrated barrage aimed at the alien flagship's energy conduits. The strategy worked. The flagship's weapons overloaded, causing a series of explosions that crippled the ship. The alien fleet, now leaderless and disoriented, began to fall back. The Endeavor pressed the advantage, driving the invaders into full retreat. Cheers erupted on the bridge as the humans celebrated their hard-earned victory. Mercer turned to Zarnok, extending a hand. We couldn't have done this without you, Zarnok. Your insights and bravery made all the difference. Zarnok clasped Mercer's hand, a gesture of solidarity and respect. It has been an honor, Captain. I have learned much from your people. Your adaptability and unity are truly remarkable. 
With the immediate threat neutralized, the crew began the task of repairing the ship and tending to the wounded. Zarnok assisted where he could, his admiration for the humans growing with each passing moment. As the Endeavor prepared to return to Xanter Station, Zarnok reflected on the journey. He had come to understand the strength of human resilience, the power of collaboration, and the value of diverse perspectives. His time with the crew had changed him, and he knew that the lessons learned here would shape his future and that of his people.